Hey everybody, this is Food Talk TV. My name is Kaz, and you're watching Sunday Night Live. Uh, we got a lot to do and a short time to do it, so I'm going to get started. I know that uh, Christine is probably waiting to come in, and so is Taylor. So let me just go over there and see if I can let them in real quick. Do I need this? I don't need this. Eh, whatever. Let's see. Who do we got here? Here. Taylor and Mr. Queen. Hi guys, it's Christine though. And there's Taylor. Hi everybody. Hey. So hello, hello. So uh, just uh, at, right on top is the Mustard Queen. That's Taylor Rose. She's the manager of Food Talk TV. And there is my cohort for Sunday Night Live. That is Christine. <laughs> we swap every other week, every other Sunday. Oh yeah. So I typically am invited on these shows if Kaz is doing something with technique that he also once made a gab about <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> this is um taylor's area of expertise is all the scientific -y type stuff that goes with cooking i know some but not as much as this brain holds up here <laughs> no actually uh, there's very little that christine doesn't do uh she just doesn't bother herself with all the little details like uh like taylor and i do that's all you know, if I had your schedule, Christine, I would not be focused on the details I focus on. <laughs> you know? Honestly, I just, I am on autopilot a lot. So those details are not as important to me because they just come naturally and I just do them. Yeah. And then uh, when you guys explain it, I'm like, oh yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> so I'm going to be making, uh, basically I'm going to be making uh, mustard today. And, or no, did, I say, <laughs> did I say mustard? Did I say mustard? <laughs> I am making mayonnaise. God forbid. It's the mayonnaise <laughs> episode. Uh huh. No. Okay. <laughs> but uh, because I'm going to be making some uh, some mayonnaise, I am also going to be making um, uh, some potato salad to put on it. This will not be ready tonight, but I, that's what I'm eating tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> Those little potatoes, those are cute. Yes, hello. If you're just joining us, welcome to Food Talk TV. We do live cooking content every single day. Tonight is our Sunday Night Live, which is our longest running show we have with alternating hosts. Sometimes it's Christine down here. This week we have Katz, and he is doing a mayonnaise episode. I'm so but it's more than that. It's going to be a lot more technical stuff. Oh, yes. yes. This is, yeah, this is not going to be uh, the normal show. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for the gifts. We appreciate those. Yes. And be sure you're giving us a follow. We do have different creators on multiple times a day, each day. And follow, uh, follow uh, Taylor. Where's everybody from? Uh, you guys call them out, okay? All right. Okay. I know Christine and Kes. Now you know Taylor. <laughs> yeah, hi. <laughs> <laughs> hello, hello. Oh, Where we have South Carolina, Carolina and Tampa Bay so far. Oh, I saw a Tampa. I just saw Tampa Bay. So I'm cutting these potatoes in half, but actually, you know, if oh, it wasn't potato for oil. potato salad, I would not be cutting them at all. They're, these are going to cook through in about five minutes, I think. Right. Jesse's in the house. Who's in the house? Jesse, Mr. Crown Royal. Hey, Jesse. Bertie says that she's in the bathroom, but uh, isn't that where you go to hide from your kids? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Immediately commented after I'm hiding from my kiddos. <laughs> hey, I you don't have any kids. <laughs> mm -hmm. that's, that's Christine's job. Is to hide. I hide in the closet from my kids to do my voiceovers because it's so chaotic here. If you watched my last video, I literally left the sound on there. I was like, you know what? Let's flag fly. <laughs> this is what happens. I'm filming chaos is ensuing all the time. Uh, let's get a pot. Yeah. Get some water in here. And we're going to get these on. 
and then we're going to get started full force. All right. I love it. Um, Taylor, do you ever have kitty paws underneath the bathroom door? Oh, yes. Yes. No. Um, when I first got my cat, like as a kitten, we had this door that would like fold open like an accordion. And so it was only one door in the entire apartment but he knew to open it by pulling his paw underneath it and pulling it open. It was to the water closet. And now to this day, he still thinks he can open every door that way. <laughs> Just like, oh my gosh. You know, uh, our Lori from cooking club, her, her cat does open the door <laughs> and it freaks her husband out all the time. So. Oh my gosh. I've had kittens so small, they went under. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Hey guys, tap that screen, share the live. We appreciate that so much. It helps us stay up on the FYP and um, follow along. Please do uh, by tapping the Food Talk TV logo and then hit um, follow so that you can get notifications anytime that we go live. Okay, so guys, we're, we're, we're making mayonnaise. Mayonnaise is, um, is one of the mother sauces. If you, um, if you, go to uh, culinary school, they're going to tell you that there's five mother sauces. Those are the French mother sauces. And uh, I can't tell you all of them off the top of my head anymore because I haven't been to culinary school in a long time. Uh, let's see. I haven't had to take that test. <laughs> yes, we've got uh, bechamel. Uh, look them up real quick, Taylor. What uh, I'm doing. Uh, I was like, she's already on it. Um, yeah, answering questions. Uh, um, I see. We've got some people. Uh, we have some cooks in the house. I wonder if anybody can type them in real quick. Oh yeah, we got Chef Jeff. He might know. So, uh, uh, well, mayo I know I'm going to mispronounce some of these. <laughs> wait, that's okay. Uh, like uh, probably uh, velute is. Yes, uh, that was definitely Esprit the one. And the uh, espagnole, espagnol. Yes. Hollandaise, classic tomato, and bechamel. That's right. Oh, there we go. Yes, tomato sauce is definitely a, a mother sauce. Those are sauces yeah. that you can make other things from. Um, the reason why mayo isn't included in there is because it's cold sauce. All those are are warm sauces. But uh, it is definitely, uh, Chef Jeff says, well done, Taylor. Uh, um, uh, so it's a, it's a cold sauce. It's not, an inclu not included in there. And there's lots of different um, uh, stories as to how mayo was uh, uh, was invented, but uh, the basic emulsion is egg and oil, and that dates back uh, probably more than a century or more than a millennium, uh, because people have been using a oil and egg emulsion to make medicines and salves. Um, I, I always wonder though. Uh, any medicine invented more than a thousand years ago, was it really medicine? I don't know. Well, ketchup was a medicine at one point. Oh. Ketchup? No, it wasn't. Yes. Are Look, you it sure? up. Look it up, Taylor, right Which now. Did? Which <laughs> word did? No, no, that is. Taylor knows oh, nothing me. about ketchup, okay? No, 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 no. no. You're not telling me. Okay, because um, tomato ketchup wasn't even really a thing until the late 1800s. And the reason why that they waited so long for, for tomato ketchup is because it's a nightshade and they thought it was poisonous prior to that. All right, you ready for it? Yeah, I'm ready for it. I'm ready. 18, I, I'm ready for you to school me. In the 1830s, tomato ketchup <laughs> was sold as a medicine claiming to cure ailments like diarrhea, indigestion, indigestion, and jaundice. Okay, and so jaundice. from that, I don't think that ketchup was a medicine. I feel like at one point, ketchup had a good marketing team. <laughs> Pretty much, you're right. Um, Did you say 1930s? 1830s, 1830s, and it was Dr. John Cook Bennett who later sold the recipe in the form of tomato pills. Yeah, no, he was like one of the first people with a, um, no, I, I remember that name. That is one of the first people with the first credited tomato ketchup recipe. That's weird that I haven't heard that. <laughs> you know what, Christine, humor her, okay? We don't want to ruin her night. I'm not ruining her night. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. I'm just here to blow your mind. <laughs> yes, and Melissa Murd is saying that honey was a medicine and... Still Chef right. Jeff is saying scotch is still my medicine. Scotch is still a medicine. There we go. 
Yeah, but we use honey for wounds and mixed with other things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, we're going to make a double uh, vat of mayonnaise because from that mayonnaise, we are going to make all the things that uh, all the things that I can think of that you can make from mayonnaise. We're going to make a remoulade. We're going to make tartar sauce. Uh, we're going to make some ranch dressing. I forgot about ranch dressing. Yeah, we're going to make some ranch dressing. Uh, what else are we going to make? What else are we going to make? Uh, horseradish. Oh, yeah, that's my, one of my favorites right there. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna be working. This. So and some other sauce because you just know this one little technique, and you can get all sorts of these sauces that you know. If you're not making your own sauces, you have to buy each one individually. That's right. Okay. So we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off with um, uh, with the basic, a basic. It's not the basic, but a basic uh, uh, mayonnaise. Um, we're going to use a blender. We've already tried it with this blender, so uh, it doesn't get quite as thick as I like. So we're also going to, once we get to uh, a good thickness, we're going to move it to a bowl and we're going to thicken it up, okay? Okay. All right, so that's that's where we're going to work. So uh, this is also Taylor's, re Taylor's recipe. So uh, we've got oil, we have mustard, we need, we've got eggs, so it's, um, and we're doubling it, right? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because yes. <laughs> you're doing two cups of oil, correct? Maybe. Yes. Two cups of oil. So the reason why this is my go-to recipe, when Kaz was asking me my mayo recipe, my go-to mayo recipe is what I do so that way I don't have to look up a recipe, right? I am using one whole egg. I am using one tablespoon of acid. Is that vinegar? Is that lemon juice? Whatever. One teaspoon mustard is whatever, Dijon, yellow, powdered, whatever you got. And then it's one cup of oil. And I remember that recipe since it's one, 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 one. And so he's essentially doubling that. And I'm looking for a lemon. Yeah. Ah, got it. You're using lemon and vinegar in yours, right? Yeah, this is a big lemon. That is huge. But yeah. I'm gonna use, uh, the for the um, tartar sauce, I'm gonna use some of the zest. So remind me not to get rid of that, okay? Matter of fact, I should probably zest it right now so I don't I don't forget about it. Hi, Guys, if you're not there making mayonnaise, if you could please tap the screen, please. That would very much so be appreciated. And then maybe share this with some of your friends, maybe some who could use some help with their mayonnaise abilities. Or not. Just share it with them anyway. Yeah, share it with them anyway. Share it with them anyway. Share it with them anyway. Wow, this thing is big. This is big as an orange, actually. It's wild. I know it's like baseball size. A little bigger, maybe. All things I said about my kneecap this week. <laughs> yeah, she hurt herself. Oh no! Yeah. Did you twist it? Well, it's it weird was... because like I fell and I hurt myself, but like it didn't bother me. But there's a spot in the top part of your kneecap that if you hit it in the right spot, a lot of fluid will release oh, nice. and so it went down and everything's fine you know whatever but um i got a third kneecap there for a bit wow okay good okay. times yeah <laughs> all right oh uh, yeah it's all that lemon zest yes y'all if you are using fresh lemons and you're not using the zest you're throwing away free flavor yes you are <laughs> yes you are groceries are so, expensive don't throw away flavor you just this, this is a 10-second cooking school, the way that I'm zesting. It is. Because for some reason, everyone else, uh, uh, Food Network and the uh, Food Channel, they zest right into their food. But if you have a recipe and you, you need two tablespoons, that's going to be way more than two tablespoons, okay? So, mm -hmm. yeah. Just look through it, okay? It's for the looks, not for the usefulness of it. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So we got that. Now let's get to this. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. So yes. I'm doubling this recipe because I'm making a lot. Uh, the recipe was one egg, one tablespoon of acid, or of acid one. one teaspoon of mustard, a cup of uh, oil, yeah. but we're doubling that. Right. Ah, uh, yes. Oh my goodness, who sent that? 
What? Oh, we got. Oh, we got a gift. Confetti. <laughs> I need real life confetti. Is that country? Yeah. Of course it is. Of course it is. Of course. How it did is. you know? <laughs> I did. I never would have thought that man's signature would be confetti. <laughs> right? Right? Okay. So. What type uh, of oil, Kaz? Yes. What type of oil? It's a question down below. Uh, I'm just using, well, you, when you're making mayonnaise, you want to use a neutral oil and, uh, some, a neutral just means an oil without a taste. Okay. Um, so for instance, olive oil in a dark bottle, don't use it. Not for mayonnaise, not for mayonnaise. So I'm going to be using canola oil. You can use avocado oil. You can use, you can use any oil that doesn't have a taste. Okay. You know. I saw someone make mayo, and this was a while back. I saw someone make mayo and say that, like, hey, neutral oil only, and I a thousand percent agree on it. But then they continued to call peanut oil a neutral oil. What? Ah, okay. And that well, kind of threw me off because peanut oil absolutely does have a taste. It does have a taste. How's but that? as I look through, there are actually conversations with people arguing about whether or not that's a neutral oil. Unless, but, you, of course, unless you want the flavor. If you want an olive oil flavored mayonnaise use olive oil yeah of course okay so i put a i put some vinegar in there if you're making your own mayonnaise and you want it to taste more like store-bought store-bought you need vinegar but you can just go with uh citrus if you want i feel like a little pinch of sugar helps with that store-bought flavor too yes <laughs> okay i don't really see well I was gonna say I didn't really see any seats, but I do see them now. So let me grab them. Mayo is the new no. Who said that? Country mayo. Is the new <laughs> country. You're gonna make Taylor lose her mind. <laughs> <laughs> that, I think that's his point. She left. She left the whole. No, no, no. Um, I left because I was collecting my old condiment shirts and I was going to pull out the mayo shirt I have that says that mayo is just okayo. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. yeah, yeah, but I'm not going to show it to you guys because my cat threw up on it. And yeah, that's not part of my brand. Okay, there's still it? plenty of juice in here. This thing is so big, but I got a good tablespoon out of it. So it's just pouring out. Okay. Oh. All right. Okay, next. Oh, we're, I had stepped away for a second. You have the eggs, you have the acid, you have the mustard. He's got mustard going in now, two tablespoons. Okay, cool. uh, for anyone who doesn't know, this is a, or not two tablespoons, two teaspoons. This is a tablespoon. There's three, approximately three teaspoons mm -hmm. in a tablespoon. So you don't have to go get another one. Right. Yes, now, in, in deciding which mustard you're going to use in here, of course, if you're using a prepared mustard, it is going to affect the flavor of it. But then you also got to consider if you're using a yellow mustard, there will be a slight yellow tint to it. The reason why mustard is added to mustard recipes, it, or I'm sorry, why mustard is added to mayo recipes is because mustard also has a great emulsifying factor, but that's really only in yellow mustard. So some of your um, stronger german mustards um some of the american made dijon mustards even though technically it should be a brown or black mustard seed they're going to have yellow in it so that's fine so that's what he's using is an american brand dijon mustard that's going to be smooth it's not going to give those like seeded specks and um we get the emulsifying properties from the yellow mustard okay so we're going to uh start this i think that oh we need a little salt don't we oh yes 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 pinch salt Pinches you salt. got me distracted on mustard that's okay. all right Oh and no! If you like a sweeter mayo, pinch of sugar. So, but. so that you know, uh, uh, I haven't really made mayo in about twenty-five years, uh, and uh, even though it's very simple, there's technique involved. Mm -hmm. Technique involved, and one easy of to things, make, easy to mess up. Yeah, one of the things that uh, that that I found is that. Okay, there need, there's some salt. Use some table salt. No, don't use some. Don't you need a, a thick salt because that's going to help with the emulsion, with the emulsifying. So, are you using sea salt? I'm using sea salt. I would recommend uh, kosher salt. 
but I like my sea salt. So. Oh, I'm glad you like it here. Yeah. All right. Hey, like Tortado. I was like. <laughs> okay. Now, this is, uh, you guys are not going to hear me talk. You're going to hear uh, Christine and Taylor talk for a while. Because oh, yeah, because when he's running the blender, it's going to like direct to our voices. So you and I just have to be continually talking. And that's totally fine. We can do that. We can do it. We can <laughs> even I'm talk ready. over each other if we have to. I'm ready. Right. So, let's go. All right. Ready? I'm so, st I, I don't know, like now I forget all the single words I've ever heard to ever talk about anything. I don't know how to talk. That's all right. Welcome to Food Talk TV. We are a group of the creators that love food. We have come together for the love of food. And we have a show that runs every single day, every single day. We have sometimes more than one show per day. And if there's not a, a personality that you like here, there is definitely one in the group that you will like. Um, we have um, somebody Monday through Sunday. Kaz and I switch off every other Sunday. And then what day is your show? And tell them about your show, Cutting the Mustard. Oh, yeah. My show is on Thursday. I'm at 7 Central at night on Thursdays. And basically, I cook whatever I feel like. And if you liked me talking about mustard just then, I can talk about all sorts of ingredients like, uh, blah, blah, blah. you know, that's basically my show. Um, I've been doing my show for about a year now. So, and yeah, we also... Yeah, prime time. Mr. Crown Royal down there is telling me prime time because he's on Friday nights and his show has been prime time lately. He is always out there on his griddle, his grill, and he has some great smoking content coming up. I am excited for Mr. Crown Royal show. And then why did I skip Crunchy? Because he is a definite Food Talk TV VIP over here. Crunchy, if you're not familiar with him, because Crunchy is getting close to a year or at least several months. But Crunchy's on at Tuesdays at 4 Eastern, 3 Central there and y'all if you want to check out our recipes and see what the creators are like you can go to our website and see the recipes we publish because we're editing them all the time and look tortado and eh, vip eh. what is it's <laughs> it's the website right there guys With all the yeah, recipes right there. from this week uh tomorrow well, you'll see Alex Wong, uh Gladua cooks she's on mondays She's on every single Monday, but her time will vary because she does, like me, work full time. So she puts us in where she can and she makes amazingly beautiful drinks and she makes really good food too. And she makes amazingly beautiful food. So, yeah. And then we also had Melissa Murd in here earlier. I'm sure that Melissa Murd is still in here. Yep, yep. Hello, Melissa Murd. Uh, they do six central on Mondays. So seriously, we always have a full lineup. And I am currently scouting for more. But you know, if you guys that's just what's happening. If you can do a video and send it to us, um, please do because, like she said, she is always. <laughs> Um, she is always scouting Taylor, always scouting for new creators that give us a different flavor to our vibe here. We love it. We like to have all different types of food. Oh yeah, we have all sorts of personalities, all sorts of different cultures, and the reason why we're spe speaking over each other and talking like this is because he's using the blender right now, and if we talk loud enough, then this app will choose to point out our voices, so that's why we are chaotically yelling at the screen. <laughs> Yes. Please, How's it going, Kat? Please, please continue to tap the screen. Yes, please. Kaz? Hi. <laughs> Are you guys still here? Thank you so much for joining. Thank you. Oh, Diesel. Oh, uh, yeah. You know what? Diaz <laughs> did point out that you can mute your cam or your thing, but typically with Kaz, he's uh, far away and doesn't really come up, but that it is something that should be noted. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> But okay, yes. So we have a um, we have a smooth mixture, but uh, smooth emulsion. But we're going to make it thicker. Okay, how are you going to do that? We're going to transfer this to a bowl and use an emulsion blender. Ooh! Someone did just ask what days are we live throughout the week, and we are live every single day. This particular show is our Sunday night live, so we're on on Sundays, but um. Kaz and Christine alternate hosting, but we do have a schedule on our site as well. I'm on Thursdays, and then next Sunday you'll see Christine. Yes. But yeah. 
And I am working on something characters. for something special. I am working on something amazingly special in three weeks. So not this next live, which is going to be, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it then. I can't tell yeah. you. You have to tune in next week. <laughs> you know, you could literally send me a message at any point and just be like, hey, here's a recipe I'm excited about. I'm like, tell me more. <laughs> and if you guys have recipes that you want us to try, send them. Yeah. Sometimes I like to around and find out. <laughs> <laughs> And we also have a, uh, at our website, if you go to cookthisforme.com, you can sign in uh, and tell us what you like us to cook. Can we do this in our mixer instead of using the blender? Um, absolutely. So yes. my main thing when I'm making a mayo, um, my main thing is like having a smaller thing, like a food processor works, but if it's a large food processor and you're only making a single thing, it's not going to mix very well. But one of my favorite mayo making things is with a small food processor like this. This this was like ten or fifteen dollars at Target. I don't know, but I use this one a lot too because it has the little holes in here, and so you can just like pour the oil in there and let it slowly drip because that's part of the emulsification is the slow drip of the oil. So you can use so many different things, and I even am wondering if Kaz is going to show us him trying to make mayo with his. Uh, just with a whisk. Listen, I would try that a million percent. It could be done, but um, RIP your arm. Mm -hmm. My grandma used to do it. It, it oh. does. It does take a while. Oh, oh yeah, everybody's yeah. grandma used to do it if they made mayo. That's awesome. um, well, grandma, well, everybody's grandma had strong arms then. Um, and by the way, cookthisforme.com is cook this the number four me.com by the way. Yes. Okay, so let me show you the thickness of this of uh, the mayo so far. Okay. Now, if we used a smaller amount in the in that blender or in a food processor, it would come out thicker. But uh, so this is where it's at right now. It's pretty is pretty creamy. But the more that we uh, the more force that we put against this, the uh, thicker it's going to get. So that's what we're going to do. All right. Uh, as, I should still be able to talk through this. Yeah, it's not near as loud as that blender. Oh, thank you. oh yeah, the immersion blender is way quieter. And Cass and I were even talking about this earlier because most people will buy a blender before getting an immersion blender. But to me, I feel like an immersion blender is a way easier tool. Like that is something. Do it. Okay, so oh, if, you guys, if you guys watched, you saw that I poured this into the uh, into the bowl from the blender, but now. Is thick. Oh yeah, yeah it's it was almost pourable. Or it was pourable. Yes. Yeah, that's uh, awesome. And the more I do this, the thicker it'll get. I like a nice thick meeting. I don't want mine pourable. I guess the recipes that would be different for maybe more pourable, but for some other side of me, I think it's Thank you, thank you, thank you. Appreciate Christine, that. Christine, I honestly going. could not hear a word you just said. Oh, sorry. I was like, no, 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 it's okay. I feel like the camera or the microphone is fighting. <laughs> it is. Um, I think for something like a ranch dressing, you want more of a pourable type of mayonnaise if you use mayonnaise as a base for your. And we're going to get to that too. Um, but for something like my horseradish, I like it thicker. So. Yeah, yeah. And like with a lot of homemade ranch recipes, they even say add some buttermilk, add some milk or something to it to thin it out. Then why would you bother if you're making a thin mayo? Like just do that. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's so this, some ranch seasoning. This is all the mayo that we need for most of our bases. Okay. Uh, tonight. Oh, 
Hey guys, welcome. I back. am curious about your ranch. <laughs> okay, well, you know what? Uh, make that's the first one. The first thing we'll make is the ranch. I just made ranch. I only really say that because I do have a ranch seasoning recipe on the website. <laughs> ah, okay. So, you know what? If you tell me what the seasoning recipe is, maybe I can do it from scratch. Uh, I may the only have thing ingredients. I would Otherwise, doubt that you have. Otherwise, the only thing I doubt you would have would be the buttermilk powder. Uh, no. Buttermilk powder? Okay. Oh, because it's a seasoning that you put into the stuff. Okay, got you. Okay. Buttermilk powder. But, and if you don't have that ranch seasoning packet, it's better. <laughs> um, and it's one of those things that I can almost never find at the grocery store, but they always sell it next to the dried milk. But the buttermilk dried powder is what really adds that tanginess that makes like the ranch seasoning powder so like tangy. It's going on the list. Yep, yep. Do it. And, you know, it's always something I struggle to find. So I typically tend to buy it when someone else is doing my shopping and delivering. Okay. All right. Okay. So uh, we've got our first base. I need to check my potatoes, make sure that they're okay. You can DS Kings. This is just yeah. like if you're just yeah, adding. You it's real buttermilk. I'm talking about for the seasoning in particular, because when you're using the seasoning to season stuff that like isn't particularly going to be ranch, you still want that buttermilk flavor. But yeah, totally. Add buttermilk. I know I'm interested to see this ranch dressing because I always use the Texas Roadhouse dupe recipe. So this is just another ranch dressing, but in a different way. Yeah, you know, you can make uh, sorry, my cat so many different ways. Weird. So many different ways. I'm going to uh, just take these potatoes and uh, take them out and put them in the fridge until I get ready to use them later on. So. Oh, I love buttermilk biscuits and buttermilk fried chicken. Yes. In fact, I made buttermilk biscuits this weekend. Did not even film it. <laughs> Those they were so good. <laughs> oh, yeah. And that... Uh Texas Roadhouse dupe was something you made last week, and that looked really good. It is pretty good. I use it a lot. In fact, I still have like about this much in, left in the jar, and I'm taking it to work Tuesday because I'm off tomorrow, guys. I don't got to go to bed early tonight. Hold it down. I have the day off. So while I am the mustard queen, one of the things I'm notorious for is for hating ketchup. Like my username is ketchup is garbage. So of course, whenever people see my username, one of the first things they start telling me are condiments they think are garbage. And so I get told, no, ranch is a garbage condiment all the time. But for me, it's like not all ranch is created equal. True. Like, Most no, ranches, like they're all different. They are. Okay. So, so yes, this is going into the, going into the, um, uh, refrigerator. Uh, can one of you tell me why I spread them out like that? Cool them off faster. Cool them off faster. That's it. <laughs> and even like air around something, the cooler it'll get faster. All right, let's see here. But I have to get. And also, if it was in a pile, there would be a chance that it would become a heat source for something else that was in your refrigerator, which could possibly be a problem. But yeah, you know, whatever. That that that's small. <laughs> okay, so I'm overthinking it. All right, so what are we going to need for? Uh, WD let's, start off, let's start off with uh, tartar sauce. <laughs> tartar sauce. I think it's going to need some capers. Okay. Oh, you're making which sauce? The tartar sauce. Yes, the tartar. Um, uh, what are you putting yours, Christine? Well, I was just looking up the recipe for the one from, um, Frisch's Big Boy, which is, um, the Cincinnati based, like people buy oh. that to take places. So I'm looking it up right now. All right. It has, come on, internet. There it goes. Country's over here just making it rain on us and heart puffs. Thank you, it's got it, Is it trying to kill that goal? I don't know. I think, I think he's famous for killing the goals. Hey, do we I, have any of our regulars in here? I thought I saw Melissa Hollywood. She's in here. Yes. Yeah, she's in here. And Jeanette's in here. 
Yeah. All right. Pam Avison is in here. Melissa Hollywood. Yes. Yes. Keens is in here. Sorry, I'm scrolling up. And if I missed you and you're a regular, say hello so I can tell Kaz you're here. Yes, please say hey so I can tell Kaz is, who is in here. Hey, right. hey, hey. This is what the oh, first big boy Now he's in here trying to defeat your goal with all the donuts. <laughs> Holy cow. That's funny. We got That's Kingsy cute. in here. What's up? What's up? Norma's in here. Hello, Norma. Hello, Jeanette. <laughs> oh, Jeanette was waiting for what? Yeah, I'm so sorry. I am the worst at that sometimes because, like, I'm always the person that thinks I've already said hello. <laughs> yes, yeah, right. This is this is what they got listed in there: okay. mayonnaise, onion, uh, dill pickle relish, pickle okay. cheese, salt, and garlic powder. All right. So we've got dill dill pickle relish. Okay. And still, since I brought the capers, I'm going to use the capers. All right. Okay. Go for it. Is your mayonnaise? Or your tartar sauce. <laughs> okay. And uh, uh, what kind of powder? I'm not going to use onion. Uh, garlic. And I, I would say you could use garlic and onion powder. Because it says gar uh, onion finely chopped. Okay. What I'm going to do is uh, use uh, some garlic. Okay. I like that. Like swap it around and onion powder. And onion he knows powder. how I feel about garlic. Listen, I love garlic. I am a proponent for garlic. I'm a snob. That's fine. <laughs> I have kids like hollering at me to to be fed. I'm like, here, right, yeah. <laughs> and a little onion powder, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, so it's one cup mayonnaise, one tablespoon of the onion, one tablespoon of dill pickle relish, one tablespoon pickle juice, one dash of salt, and one dash of garlic powder. Okay. All right. You do you though. So I was going to use a bowl to mix it up in, but I'm just going to mix it up into the jar that I'm going to keep it in. I think that's okay. all right. All right. So. Kaz, I feel like you've already done enough dishes today. I think so. <laughs> yeah, I think we're over it. <laughs> oh, nope. That's not what I wanted to do. Okay. Awesome. There's enough for that base. Oh, Pam says her husband grows garlic and it's red Janice garlic. Like, Ooh, man. I need to oh, be I working like hard garlic. on my gar garlic garden. I literally love garlic. Sometimes I just don't have time to do all the chopping and it really doesn't take that much time. I know Country, he likes to freeze his and he does a bunch of the time. Okay. So oh, I do that too. My onion powder. Oh, Kaz, I, um, I, although I have, um, I've got garlic powder here. I using the minced garlic because I want the texture. Yes, that Kaz, is uh, Jeanette said, um, "Look at Kaz. He has the Bobby seasoning thing." Oh, I see. Busted me. Yep. I stole it. I stole what is it that me. called? What is it called? Yeah. What is uh, it, Kaz? What's the name for it? I know that there's a term and I can't think of it. I know because uh, normally there's always somebody in there that says, I love my, and I can't remember what it is. I call right, it this is very garlic. common in Indian cooking. So a lot of the times you'll see an Indian cooking. And the reason why Jeanette said that this is a Bobby thing is because our show on oh. Saturday mornings is the Yorkshire Indian. Someone who does, you know, an Indian man in Yorkshire that does Indian cooking and yeah. What's so that? he always has one of those. So that's why it's the Bobby thing. Lemon yeah. Zest? So I don't know what that is, but we'll call it the Bobby thing. Is it the lemon zest? This is lemon zest. All right. I don't good. know how that particular um, recipe left out uh, citrus, but I'm not going to leave it out. It's from Cincinnati. I don't know. <laughs> it's from Cincinnati. <laughs> it's from Cincinnati. That explains Somebody it. said you're the spice marauder. I think it was country that said that. Oh, where can you get that little spice thing? Um, I think we have it available in our Amazon. We do have it available in our Amazon store. So go. this is uh, dill relish, which was in your Cincinnati recipe. And it's pretty much in every recipe. Mm -hmm. so. And um, Lane will tell you sweet relish is garbage. That is a garbage condiment here. <laughs> okay. Wow. Yes, we will throw a sweet pickle in the trash. 
I don't care how fast you think it is. We'll throw it in faster. <laughs> no, no, no sweet pickles here. So based on what Google says, um, so far I hear Indian spice box, but then I also hear the Indian term masala daba. Daba, daba, that's it. Daba. And uh, masala means uh, spice. And I'll type that in case. There we go. I didn't want to correct it to masala cabbage. No, <laughs> Please, I, did, did, no. doubled eggs. I said daba, not cabbage. What the heck? I guess I do type cabbage a lot. I, I cook a lot of cabbage. Diaz Keith says you have to have sweet relish and deviled eggs. No, we use dill in our deviled eggs. Truth. <laughs> Ooh, wow. Okay. And it's, that's how it is. <laughs> Do we have any baker lives? Well, we do have we do have Red Wagon Bakery, Michelle, that's on Wednesdays, which is going to be at an earlier time. I have to figure that out. But um, she she runs a bakery and does a lot of baking. So we see a lot of baking. We also see a lot of food meals. But I feel like we're going to lean more into baking. But I'm I love baking content. Oh, yes. Thank okay. you. All right. Let's see how this tastes. She does bake. Yes. But she also cooks. So. I didn't see Kaz's face. She's in the comments. Yes. Uh, it's very plain. All right. Is it? So, do you think it's because of the lack of? Did you put salt in it? I was just gonna say that. Let's go with some salt. Okay. Because <laughs> there was salt in that recipe. I sent you the recipe, Taylor, on Facebook Messenger. What I'm looking at. It's just very simple. Like, don't get wild with the salt, though. No, no, no. I mean, come on, it's mayo. Yeah. I think it can take some seasoning. <laughs> garlic was the problem. What? What? The garlic was the problem? Yeah, that's what Country said. But uh, in this, it says garlic powder, but they want you to use chopped onion, so. Okay, let's see. The salt. Okay. Salt fixed it. So y'all, if you're ever like tasting your food and you just feel like it tastes bland and you're not quite sure what's wrong with it, try adjusting your salt. Okay. There's my tartar sauce. Oh no. Oh no what? Oh Andrea said they admitted she said they admitted her. Oh. Dang it. Oh, she's probably dehydrated. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. She's probably I'm just glad that she's getting taken care of. Yes. yes. Absolutely. Okay, so like that, next... that's not a fun place to be, but but a good place to be if you need it. That's right. Probably the safest place you could be. Yeah, unless you're not sick in the first place. Right. Fair. <laughs> yes. Okay. So <laughs> that was uh tomato or tomato. Uh, of tomato. There was mayonnaise uh, that we made into a uh, uh, tartar sauce. sauce. The next one is going to be uh, a horseradish cream sauce. Mm, yummy, my favorite. Okay, and I'm going to uh, I'm going to do that one. <laughs> Crunchy says to throw away the sweet relish now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Y'all, let us know in the comments, what are your feelings about relish? Dill, sweet, or garbage? You guys know my opinion. Staunch about dill. Love it. Hate sweet. <laughs> now, I hate them both. <laughs> okay, so there's no recipe for horse cream, horseradish cream sauce. There okay. is mayonnaise, and there's as much horseradish as you want. That's okay. it. Burn your mouth off. That's fine. Good. That's it. Yes. Perfect. Ooh, we got two votes for dill and two votes for sweet so far. So maybe this isn't as a defining mm -hmm. of a thing as we thought. Now, one thing that uh, that we are going to want to do is to color it 
a little bit more than the horseradish. So I'm going to put a little mustard in there because I want to be able to tell the difference, okay? Okay. Uh, Which by the way, mustard and horseradish are part of the same family and they are both actually the only two things I can think of at the top of my head that are considered prepared condiments. And what the legal definition of prepared in this point would be like an ingredient that's manipulated with vinegar to create a spreadable sauce. And mm -hmm. horseradish and mustard are mm -hmm. essentially the only ones that do that, but they both respond to the same way in their raw form combined with cold water gets that like spicy kick, but then the vinegar sets it. So yeah, cousins, I don't know if we needed that. That was, that was uh, a little bit of science that we needed. Love that. <laughs> that's why it's she's why here. I was invited. That's the yeah. reason why she was invited. <laughs> Yeah, 10k likes guys thank you for the taps thank you it. and if you <laughs> guys missed it i'm going here. to be making more mayonnaise a little bit later in the show so uh if you didn't see me make make, make this mayonnaise you'll see me make it a different way oh okay a couple different ways thank you guys for all the taps really you guys out there putting in the work as a matter of fact taylor and i discovered that uh well tell them about it taylor Oh, really? You want me to tell them about your discovery? Yes. Hey, we we, okay, found, we so, found it out at the same time, so. Yeah, yeah. So basically what happened is we're discussing the science of making mayonnaise and how it's essentially an emulsion and like how that science works. And we've been talking about this all day. And so he calls me to show me that he has a jar of mayo and there's like a little bit of mayo left, right? And the way we think about it and the way he tells this to me is like, well, I already created the emulsion. It's the lecithin, lecithin, that in the egg, that is the emulsion factor. And that's why we add egg to the oil and that's how we get a creamy thing. Now, since we already have this mayo, this emulsion is already made. Can I just add more oil to this and make more mayo? And she says- the emulsion's already made. And so Kaz it? goes over here and takes this little bit of mayo that he has and adds like you like quadrupled it yes with the amount of oil until it got like too oily and too like eh, broken so we got to figure out a way to like show you guys this because it was essentially taking you're almost out of mayo but you need just a little bit more we can just like emulsion blend it and just add some more oil That's and we thought we'd adjust the taste and stuff but no huh. fascinating oh. Yeah, so I, I'm just over here, like, my jaw is like, are you seriously making mayonnaise out of mayonnaise? I love it, yeah. <laughs> he like, made mayonnaise you know, out of mayonnaise. I love that. Man, okay. this is just so smart. Like, mad stuff about chili down here. Like, chili with sour <laughs> cream and the cheese. Okay, so <laughs> I'm going to taste this. This is just, this is uh, four ounces worth of, mayo i put in uh about a half a teaspoon of um brown mustard just so, spicy brown mustard just so that i could color it a little bit and i put in a tablespoon of um horseradish and okay. I'm, going to, I'm going to see how it tastes it's actually uh you guys cannot really see it but it's flaky you can see uh little flakes in there yes, okay yes. hey kaz you're gonna taste that now and it's gonna it'll taste however it tastes but you wait till tomorrow or the next day and that gets all married up in there. That's going to be like. Actually, so you read my mind. This is going into the uh, refrigerator uh, for the, until the end of the show. And then I'm going to make a sandwich. Nice. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so a roast, a roast beef sandwich. Oh yeah. Because I know that this has to marry a little bit. Oh yeah. Roast beef sandwich all day long. How long will that last in the refrigerator? Uh, this will last, uh, given the acidity of the horseradish, probably about two weeks. Or until he finishes it. Right. Okay, so now, this if is... you were to make this recipe with like, I feel like it would last longer with a store-bought mayo. Mm. Yes. I think that's the reason for the short shelf life is the fact yes. that you made it from eggs. Yes. Okay. And there, uh, okay. there are fewer stabilizers in homemade. Uh, of course. Yeah. Okay, so this is spicy 
but it's not spicy enough. So I'm going to double the, uh, the amount of pepper. Spicy later. Yeah. Uh, you're saying, oh, later? Yeah. Oh. You know what? No, there's never enough. No, there's uh, never no. enough. <laughs> no, I'm a baby when it comes to heat. So you, you're right. This is this is going to get spicier. Okay, this real quick. Um, with horseradish and mustard, if the heat is ever too much for you, like you get too much horseradish or too much mustard, all you have to do is be a mouth breather for a little bit. The air will dissipate. Well, um, so the heat is very volatile, so it evaporates super quickly. So as soon as it hits your tongue, it's going to your nasal cavity. So as long as you're not breathing out your nose and you're just breathing out your mouth, you're not going to experience the heat. Okay. Things we learn on. So okay. too much horseradish. Be a mouth breather for a little bit. Okay, so I'm going to keep out the horseradish because the next one we're making is a remoulade, All right. and we need the horseradish. Oh yeah. Oh, hey y'all, if you're just scrolling through here, welcome to Food Talk TV, where we do live cooking content every single day. This is Kaz with Sunday Night Live, the longest running Food Talk TV show. If you have been watching for a bit, we're having a pretty chatty time. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Be sure you tune in, be sure you follow us because we have different personalities on multiple times a day throughout the week. But I, I think this is one of our most fun ones, even though it's probably our you know, quietest. Yes, I am in my craft room. You know this. Well, normally they only see room. they only see you in a tiny box, but I wanted you guys to come up big since I was going to be silent during most of the live. So this is my paint toolbox behind me. Also, is my craft box. You guys can see I it. I love that. I love that so much. I wanted the lime green one, but they didn't have the big one, so I was like, Ugh, pink. <laughs> Marianne B says, hi, Kaz. Jeanette, I think you might actually be allergic. I think we talked about this before, but I think Jeanette might actually be allergic to mustard. Oh, yeah, Jeanette, we talked oh, yeah. about that. We had the same one. Yeah, it's considered a major allergen in um, European countries where mm -hmm. it's labeled the same way we label like peanuts and shellfish. Mustard? But mustard allergies are actually pretty rare and are typically focused around France or Spain. Interesting. Okay, so we're going to go with uh, some horseradish sauce, okay. or some horseradish. Mm -hmm. And we are definitely not going to do as much. It's still about a tablespoon. Uh, but we're also going to be doing uh, mustard and relish and a little hot sauce. And I keep going to this particular mustard because it's right in front of me. I have several different kinds of mustard. As a matter of fact, I've got most of them. Uh, most of the common mustards. I don't have mustard like uh, Taylor has. But no, we have mustard like I would be Taylor concerned has. if you did. Yeah, no. nobody has that. <laughs> yeah, nobody has my mustard collection, please. Nobody has. And that. if I wanted more, I could get some mailed to me. <laughs> There's that. Okay. There's uh, some lemon zest. We're going to go with the deal. And I'm going to get some, some hot sauce. The hot sauce is what's going to give uh, the Romulot the uh, signature pinkish flavor. But I'm going to be using some mustard hot sauce. Interesting. I like 50-50 on mustard in hot sauces. Most of the time, it's just like, ooh, we threw some seeds into here, but they like didn't do anything with those seeds. They just threw mm -hmm. them in there. You know, the thing about this is I tasted it. Does it I actually taste it. mustard? It ta you taste mustard. You taste mustard. And uh, I think you've tried this before. Have you tried this one before? I this don't is think the I one from, huh? This is the one from the uh, podcast that you were on. No, no, it's not. Yeah, it is. Let's look at it. Vienna lager. Oh, okay, okay. Those were from some of my friend people, but it's the Irish Spikes. That's the um, friend I am from the hot sauce podcast I was on. Uh, so, but I'm the, kind of embarrassed now like because I should have known that. It, it tastes like <laughs> it. It tastes. You definitely taste the mustard as an individual ingredient. Um, I know that your comment on one of the sauces was 
There just wasn't enough mustard in it, right? Mm -hmm. Or at least that's the comment that you made on the um, on the live or on the yeah. uh, podcast. Not enough mustard. <laughs> but to be fair, I I have that problem with just about anything that has the word mustard in there. Gotcha. Okay, so uh, Taylor, you actually said something earlier about um, putting must. As soon as you put mustard into mayonnaise, it becomes rum a lot. Did you did you say that? Yeah, um, I couldn't find which exactly in my book. So basically, anytime I've ever made content or like done any sort of teaching about making mayo and or the difference between aioli and mayo and a remoulade, I always get comments about how that's not a real aioli that has you know garlic in there. That's not a real this. It has this in there. But there is a very strong amount of people that feel like if you add mustard to a mayonnaise recipe, if you're making mayonnaise, as soon as you add mustard, it's a remoulade. Mm. like that is a very strong thought with a lot of people so i don't personally believe that because the mustard doesn't add too much flavor to it but no. it's definitely a purist kind of like thought to okay, me okay so this is a is got a the signature plant pink which mustard would not give you it would not give you a pink color. No. So. that's from the cayenne or from the the pepper yes Hmm. And let's see what we get here. And again, that'll become more spicy if you let it sit for a while. It will definitely become more spicy. I know, I was just looking up. Um, that was one thing when we went to New Orleans that I really enjoyed was the remoulades that they had for the different sandwiches or for, well, for anything that we, we okay. need on there. That's really good. This definitely would go great on a poor boy sandwich. Mm -hmm. So, guys, the um, uh, these recipes, the basic um, mayonnaise recipe, makes so many different things that uh, that are on your shelf. So many com condiments that are on your shelves. Yeah, which is why he's calling it a mother sauce. And just because the French aren't calling it the mother sauce doesn't mean that's essentially what it is. Now. The father of French cooking, his name is uh, uh, August Escavier. Uh, he, in his technique, uh, Thank you. Yeah, look at his he, online he, college. He actually calls it a mother sauce, but you know, he didn't come up with the mother sauces. No. Nope. Oh. A corned beef sandwich or any deli sandwich that looks like. It, that would be really delicious. Yes, it would be. And we are making a roast beef sandwich a little bit later because I haven't had dinner. Okay, so this is going to go. What else are we making? Well, please tap the screen. Oh, please. We're making uh, ranch, right? Oh, yeah. You said you were making ranch. Now, I made ranch a different way last week. I want to see how you're making it this week because you can yeah. make ranch a blue million ways. You really can. <laughs> you guys tell me about Food Talk TV for a second. All right, well, Taylor's gone, so I will. Hey guys, welcome to Food Talk TV. It's a group of creators that we've come together for the love of food. You can go to foodtalktv.com and you can read all about our creators. And you can also find all of the recipes that we are posting and talking about each and every day. If you missed any part of this live, you can go to our YouTube or to our Facebook page and you can rewatch every single bit and you can cook along with the cook. Also, if you go to Food Talk TV, the logo up there and you tap that and you can follow along um, follow our page and then anytime we go live you will be notified and also we will post our little videos our our little thing is like 10 second cooking school um so if you have a 10 second cooking school you would like to submit to us um and let us try um you can just message any one of us or food talk tv all right please continue <laughs> please my cat's continue. not used to me working this late so he's keeps jumping on the table so that's okay, like, what, what I have to do. I have to direct it back to our regularly scheduled program, right? Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna scooch us closer. Okay, oh. so actually, I'm not gonna do it directly in the jar because I need to be able to actually mix some things up. So I need, yeah. I need some space. Oh, okay, got you. I was like, I just, I'm, I see like half the screen is like your trash can. 
Well, well I mean, yeah, Kaz was telling me earlier he went and got jars that would be perfect for each one of these little things. So we got jars that would be the perfect size. And um, ha ha, uh, <laughs> they were not. <laughs> they were definitely not. It happens, you know. Well, what happened is they were like some of these jars that like are made to be stackable. Yeah, I love those. And so, yeah, yeah, they're really cool and all. But he saw them in the package and it just showed the two jars stacked oh, no. in the photo. So, yeah, but exactly. yeah, I love these jars. That's where I store my herbs. Heck yeah. Okay. My mason jars have the handles on them like mugs. So there's a mayo. That's... Hello, it's the mayo. I have a serious mason jar collecting problem. Um, same. Same. You don't even, I have a cabinet that's just dedicated to them. And then I can't tell you how many I have in my basement. Because <laughs> my husband will know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so my aunt, she She'll makes be like salsa. 1927. Pretty much. <laughs> so um, my aunt makes salsa. And every time I come home, she sends me home with salsa jars. And she was like, make sure you save the jars and you can bring them back. All the ones in the basement are the ones of the salsa that I have never put to her. And there's a lot. <laughs> She's coming up next weekend. So hopefully I remember to send them back with her. Yeah. <laughs> There'll be like three boxes of jars. Okay. So I'm trying to do the puzzle piece on the screen. Oh, no. I hate it when it does that. But What's Rosalie did ask what's on the menu. And it is basically a mayonnaise episode today. We're talking a lot about the just oh, technique awesome. of making mayonnaise. But he turned the mayonnaise that is a mother sauce into we've got tartar, we got remoulade. And There's also horseradish. 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 Yeah. Okay, yeah. So, we're focused on ranch. So this ranch. Actually, is on the website already. Yay. It's been on the website for a couple years. This is Ashton's recipe. Yep. Oh. Oh yeah. So it's half mayo, half sour cream. Yep. Oh, I did not hear half mayo. Half. <laughs> I heard f mayo, and I'm like, that's <laughs> weird. <laughs> <laughs> <right now." laughs> Half mayo, half sour cream. Uh, this is lemon zest. Oh yeah. That we've been using off and on in most of the recipes because why leave it out, right? Right. Lemon zest is three flavor. And ranch powder. Okay, and this has buttermilk powder inside of it. Mm-hmm. And if you want to know how to make your own ranch powder, you can look up Taylor's recipe. Yeah, it will be on the Food Talk TV. And minus the powder from scratch, the only thing, if you are one that has a really, like, stacked yeah. spice cabinet, pretty much the only thing you're going to need to buy is buttermilk powder. It's really going to be the only thing. Um, here, I'll show you what mine looks like. Yes, what is happening? <laughs> you know what's happening. <laughs> <laughs> listen we have got a it's like a running gag on sunday like oh watch me struggle with this jar because it is not going to open and that is funny that that particular jar doesn't open it's, pl it's plastic yeah it, what? <laughs> it's, it's taking its plastic. life into its own hands okay i know oh, but this is powder. the buttermilk powder that i buy it's available it's at Walmart. always next to the instant dry milk like these are always next to each other so if you see this this is probably nearby but the buttermilk powder Cass, not really a common out. ingredient wait i i need to step off screen just for a minute guys okay but but hang on does it not have a flip top yes it does okay flip the top no 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 just wait <laughs> oh he's probably cutting that in half he is yes <laughs> <laughs> 1000% what I would do. Yeah, he a rubber glove is not going to help if it's just not opening. I think there's something wrong with that. No, but um, I've worked in restaurant kitchens, like I have a lot of experience in restaurant kitchens. And there have been so many times where if they're using mayo as a base for a sauce, and it comes in a big jug, 
they're not going to like unscrew it and like try and dump it out. They're just going to chop it in half and scoop it out. Like that is way quicker than opening up the lid and carefully doing that. No, just yeah. chop it in half. Like that yeah. is such a culinary thing right here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so that's that's what I was resisting doing. Okay, okay. but what but, did you do? But I'm like, okay, it's not a good example because because <laughs> this is the quick way to get it done. Okay? <laughs> Both of us are like, yeah, you're just gonna cut the top off. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. But I said no. Nope. Did you get it? You got no, it. I didn't do anything off camera. It hurt you guys talking. Because <laughs> all of a sudden, all of a sudden, it gave it up. Yeah, it all of a sudden, it gave it up. See, maybe if you had a rubber glove, like Diaz Kink said. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Did they put cornstarch in that one? Interesting. Probably for pres uh, to make it not clump. Yeah, like as in not cakey. Yeah, does that have cornstarch when you're done cutting the top of that off? Oh, in this one? Yeah, that is a thick wood. Like the yeah. steel thing was thick. Yeah. Is that not the same size lid that fits on top of a mason jar? Really? I don't know. Well, I don't know. Let's see. Because I, I know it's one. that way with the parm cheese. A small mouth. No. no, no, no. I mean like that plastic lid part where you can move it on to a mason jar. Oh, can you move this onto a mason jar? Right. The um plastic sprinkle part. Yeah, like a jelly lid. Jelly jar? No. No, okay. Okay. Cause I know that's that way with the maybe cheese. The parm, parm maybe cheese. the parm. Maybe the parm uh lid would work. It does. Yeah, yeah, the parm cheese lid. I was kind of hoping this is one of those things, but it's not. Yeah. Well, I love okay, it. so. Oh, um, Cass is making a ranch dressing that was Ashton's recipe with lemon zest and the ranch and sour cream and his homemade mayo. Yep. There's yeah. no And Andrew was there. asking, thinking that you were making her dip. <laughs> I like that Melissa said tap on the table to make it release. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, uh anybody who no matter what brand this is great value but the second ingredient in all of ranch powder is going to be msg because yeah. that's what makes it delicious monosodium gl uh, glucamate right yeah. right yeah. it's delicious okay. you were telling me you don't know sciencey stuff yes you do I mean, 90% of people probably knew that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I do. The other 10% yeah. are like poison. Yeah. <laughs> and then we would call those people silly and stupid. Yeah, yeah. you got to have the MSG. That's where the flavor's at, guys. That's where it's the flavor is. It's just a finer salt. That's all it is. Also, anyone... Um... Anyone who thinks that they're allergic to MSG is probably also allergic to mushrooms, Parmesan cheese, um, tomatoes. Wait, is it mushrooms, cinnamon, and what was, oh, bacon? It's Lillian. <laughs> <laughs> it's Lillian. Lillian, yes. Okay, so you would think that this is ready, but it does have to sit for at least an hour. Yes, yeah, but, but this Sorry, is memory. this is ranch dressing, okay? Mm -hmm. This is out uh, Ashton's version of ranch dressing. It's actually very, very good. Yep. I love that lemon zest add in. Yeah. Same. And uh, most of these recipes don't call for lemon zest, but you if you're throwing it away, you're just wasting. You're just wasting flavor. Mm -hmm. So I'm just putting it in. And everything that uh, looks good and sounds good. Okay, so now we're going to do another mayonnaise. We're going to do QP. And this is the, the recipe that you watch us do may not be the final recipe that winds up on the website. This has definitely just been like a main conversation with me and Kaz because um, him and I have talked about what he's doing today but like this is stuff i've spent a lot of hours researching on and so he's telling me about wanting to make mayo and i'm like "Ooh, let's make cupy and we're just kind of like drafting a recipe here and the first one he made was terrible 
We cool. think the second go around will be better. <laughs> okay, well, we hope. All fingers crossed, guys. It's one of those it's one we're great. Because we're but, doing um, it Is anyone in the comment section familiar with QP? Do you like QP? Is that a thing that you enjoy? Because I love QP. I mean, it's it's all right. I really like it. It's like the tangy. And I think one of the best parts of it is the fact that it comes in a bottle with like a little squeezy top over the top. I no, think that that's I one love. of my favorite parts of it. The flavor, I'm just like, I'm... So it I'm, is I'm, a Japanese mayo. It is a bit tangier. And it's typically tangier because of its use of like egg yolks. And then there's also rice vinegar instead. Yeah. And then there's a bit more umami added in there. So we are going to have some MSG and or dashi added to it. So, but... Yeah, it's a Japanese. Kat, I did write down the recipe you and I talked about, so that way we'd be ready for this. Now, I, I'm also going to use that Kewpie for you my potato salad. That is. You're going to have all white sauces in there. there. Did he put those all in the same jar, Taylor? The same style jar? I think it, they're all the same style jar. Yeah. So how's he going to know, just what? by looking, which one's which? What are we talking about? Oh, he actually did um, with the horseradish sauce. He made sure to add mustard in there, so it would be tinted yellow a little okay. bit, so he That's would know. Two different jars. All right. No, I yeah, was yeah. wondering if you had the same jars. If they're all white sauces, like how are you going to know which one's which? Oh no, yeah, they're all. That's what Taylor was explaining. They're different colors. Okay. Well, I know the rumelade. You would be able to tell immediately, but then yeah, with the mustard. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I'm on board. But like, that's often. Um, I've worked in restaurants where they would add paprika to our horseradish sauce just so you could see the white specks and know it wasn't like another like cheese sauce. Okay, kind of thing. But yeah, this is what the QP. Yep. Okay. Right. Right. We are going to need Marin. We're going to need a couple eggs. We're just using the yolks, correctly or correct? Correct. Correct. We are using the oaks because they are richer. Okay. But if you only have one egg, just use one entire egg. It's one entire egg or two yolks. All right. Uh, we are going to need a bowl to, to separate. Um, uh, what else are we needing? So I think we realized last time because we did want to have the acid in there but we didn't want as much mirin in there because mirin is essentially a sweetened rice vinegar. So basically think of it as like half rice wine vinegar, half sugar. So for the mirin, I think we're only gonna need a teaspoon of that, but then do a tablespoon of regular vinegar. Rice if you have it, but um, white distilled is fine too. What oil are you using? This one is uh it's a blend it's crisco and it is a blend of sunflower and canola and sun soybean oil and then yeah one of these guys tossed me like 10 bucks at walmart just like jug this of is oil what, this is what yes. i would have used <laughs> jug of oil. i just lost the reason why i'm using this one instead of the other one is because i lost it i don't know where it's at <laughs> okay i also use sunflower Fair. oil a lot Okay, that sounds good. Yeah. I don't like the taste of the vegetable oil, though that is something that is recommended, but I don't like that taste. But, you know, that's what you have. You like it? All right. All right. All right. So let's separate these eggs. Thank you, Melissa. Thanks for coming in. So Christine always cracks with one egg, but can you separate with one egg, with one hand? No. Well, yes, I can. I can just reach in and scoop that egg yolk out. I do that a lot. Uh, yeah, you can. You can. I you do that a lot. Whatever. Like, oh, let's just grab those egg yolks out and I put them in a bowl. I remember when I first was starting to learn how to cook and like I had never required a recipe that needed um, them separating, but I had saw one of the like I guess like tasty or like the five second secrets or something, the tip to separate it would be like an empty plastic bottle and you would just like squeeze it and put it over the egg yolk and it would suck up just the egg yolk and you can separate it. But for the longest time, I thought that was the only way you could separate it. 
Well, I mean, <laughs> oh, that was the only way, the only thing that worked, right? Yeah, I thought that was the only way. See, I crack all of my eggs into the bowl and then I, I wash my hands. I get my hands wet and soft hands. You just go in and scoop out the eggs, egg yolks and put them in a different bowl. Oh yeah. Okay. Typically when you're doing this, you're doing this in like batch. Yeah. Anything. All right. Else. So, uh, oh yeah. Next. Okay, so I said two egg yolks, a teaspoon of mirin, a tablespoon of vinegar. Teaspoon of mirin. And a tablespoon of vinegar, because remember, we're increasing the acid, but only using the mirin as the sweetener. Are you guys putting any mustard in this? Actually, no. Really? Yeah, I know. I know. And that was my suggestion. I was like, Dijon would be a very good mustard in this, I think. It, and it's it, funny. It, one, one of the things about this is the yellow of the yolks, right? The yellow or, or brownness of the mustard. Uh, we're also adding a uh, liquid dashi. It's brown. This is going to turn out white. Weird. Yeah. yeah. What is dashi? You know somebody's going to ask. I don't know. Uh, it's essentially... I feel like he would be more technically correct. Okay, so it's a uh, it's broth. It's a very savory umami uh, cinder broth. Uh, uh, mushroom flavored? Uh, no, no. There's uh, uh, it's made from kombu, which is seaweed, and that okay. is where the MSG, the umami, comes from. Okay. And, uh, uh, then you use bonito, which is essentially uh, flaky, um, uh, flaky tuna. Oh, right, flaky tuna. You warm so it up. Fish flakes and seaweed juice. Yeah, and it uh, you strain it off, and it's a really, really good broth. Yeah, and that's what they use <laughs> the same the same way we use chicken broth here. Yeah. That's, what they, that's what they use. That's an interesting. That's interesting. <laughs> and uh, if you'd like to know how to make it or watch it being made on Tuesdays at one o'clock central is Mayumi and she's she makes it lots and lots and lots. Oh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, Cass was telling me about all this dashi stuff and I'm like, wow, how often do you do this? And he's like, I don't. I've just been in Mayumi's live on Tuesdays. <laughs> it's like, dang, I need to hang out for some more uh, Japanese cooking knowledge. Oh, no kidding. Okay, I so, said, you know, so I'm not going to make the dashi. It only takes a few minutes to make, no. uh, but they That's have okay. concentrated. And this is, is called um, uh, Mimi, this M-E-M-I, or M-M-I, and you can find it on, um, uh, it pr pretty much, it's made by Kiko Man, so you can find it pretty much at any Asian market or on Amazon. Uh, this costs $3.99. Uh, it's concentrated dashi, basically. It's concentrated dashi, all right? Mm -hmm. uh, but I have all the things to make dashi too because I got really obsessed with all the stuff that she was making. Uh, the American name is uh, noodle soup base. Okay. Okay. I'm gonna go to Jungle Gems and look for it. Oh, they'll definitely have it. Yeah. They'll definitely have it. Uh, I found yeah. your mustard that you had in your can. I have that in my cabinet now. Oh yeah. This uh, is the hot stuff where if you add cold water to it, then it's like very similar to horseradish. Like it's hot stuff. That's my favorite. But it works really well in rubs and stuff if you really want the mustard flavor to be prominent. Okay, so how much um, uh, dashi were we, were we looking at? We wrote down a teaspoon, and I think you and I were curious about whether we were going to do half or a whole teaspoon. Of this. Okay, I'm doing half because this is concentrated. Yeah, it's concentrated. And honestly, a lot of mayonnaises and stuff don't have the flavor additive like right. that. I mean, we have mustard added to a bunch of them, but... Now, we didn't need salt on this, right? Afterwards. Yes, yes, pinch of salt. I did put that. That was a concern. Like yeah. flaky salt, maybe? Like a flaky salt? Sea salt? Oh, yeah. What? Are you doing a flaky salt because this is a uh, mayo emulsion? You know, uh, no, but I am going to use uh, kosher salt. Okay. Jay Speck, number number one okay. gifter. Tap, let's tap, 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 tap. Jay, let's okay. tap, tap, tap. I do have the flaky salt. 
but I think uh, we wanted to stand up a little bit more so the kosher song will be better. Okay, all right. Yeah, let's tap, tap, tap. We're at 19,000 likes right now, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, that's about a quarter teaspoon, I think. Just not the dishwasher fish. And I'm not even sure what uh, that comment was related to, but I laughed. <laughs> okay, so we're going to need... I can't see your handsome face. Well, it's because he's like showing you a technique right now. Yes, I'm showing you these things right now. But yeah. but I will show my face, don't worry. Who's, saying, who's asking about that? Jace. 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 Oh. oh, he's like, oh, this dude, I'm going to show my face right now. <laughs> uh, right now, we're oh, making QP away. mayo. We're making QP mayo right now. Yeah, um, I will show what we're talking about, but it's a Japanese mayo. And, y'all, I love this Japanese mayo so freaking much, but, like, I can only find it, and it's eight freaking dollars. What? Hang on, Every girl. single place I go to get this, and it's like I'm not spending eight dollars on freaking mayonnaise. I'm gonna go look and see how much it is at Jungle Gems. Yeah, like because this one at Walmart, it's a no. This one is a one pack that they're selling for fourteen dollars. What? And they're like, well, we had to ship oh, it from Japan. That's wild. So I still owe you a mustard soda, anyway. After it got destroyed. I actually just before. got one on TikTok, y'all. You did? I did. I got Let TikTok me see if it's the same one. TikTok shop. What's the company? I need to know. Everything is on Lester TikTok. Lester Fictions. But I don't know That's what it. company it was offered on TikTok shop. No, what's the company that makes that soda? It says Lester's Fixins. Yeah, What? where's it made at? Rocket fizz. Rocket fizz. Okay, so you guys, I'm going to be doing this, but I need you to tell everyone what's going on. Okay. I'm sure most of them don't understand or weren't here at the beginning. Oh, yeah. We were all just doing a bunch of rambling, talking about what's going on. So what he is doing right now is he is recreating QP mayo. We did go over discussing, like, how to make actual mayo. But this is more closely related to a QP mayo. And some of the difference between QP mayo and regular mayo. QP mayo, we're using egg yolks rather than the entire egg in here. So it's two egg yolks rather than one whole oak. Yeah, that's going to leave for a richer thing. There's also some dashi added to it, which is essentially a kombu broth. He has a little um, concentrated thing that also had a little bit of soy in there along with some bonito in there. We also have some mirin. There's some rice vinegar and a pinch of salt. And when you are making a mayo like this is here, you first want to blend it. At first, you want to get the less of it really um, volumized. And then he's slowly dripping in the oil so that way it can slowly become an emulsion and create that. And we found our best way of going about this has been with an immersion blender right here with a thin way. And, you know, it doesn't quite work when it's just like stationary like that. It really works when you're moving around the blade and making it emulsification. So it does take a minute and it does require a bit of patience when you do this, but as long as you, it's really easy to do, it's really easy to master the technique, but it's also really easy to mess up. So did you hear any of what I said, Christine, or is my voice drowned out by that too? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This cute little, it's like the little poopy doll on it, which is like the whole thing. So, um, yeah. It looks like that little doll right there. It's real popular back in like the 40s. The little poopy doll. What was that like? It was popular when? Back in the 40s. That dashi, it's just like maybe that's what's throwing me off. And because there's something about Cupy Mayo that it's it's something. Yeah, it's like the dashi. 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 Yeah,
she, it might be that because I think some brands will do like just straight up MSG, but MSG, like in its season form, what that is, is an extraction from dashi. Like kombu, like MSG as a seasoning was first extracted from seaweed. And like that's how they get that MSG flavor. So I think in this case, since we are doing. I wonder if they do the whole dashi or if they just do MSG, but that might be what's throwing you off because it does change the flavor profile and it's not the same as usual mayo and mm -hmm. could throw people it's off. like Dukes and Hellman's like, or best, you know, like maybe if I tried a different brand, I might like it better. Yeah, I think so. Or maybe even, I don't know, but one of my favorite parts of the QP is just the little squeeze bottle yeah. and just getting the little, so yeah. I think that's my favorite part. <laughs> Me too. So I hated mayonnaise. Like I never would eat mayonnaise for the longest time and until I <laughs> ate Duke's mayonnaise. And then I liked mayonnaise. And but still will not eat some like Hellman's or what is the other one? Kraft, Miracle Whip. I don't like any of that. You know what? They all have different tastes. They're yeah. all different formulations. They really do. I do like yum yum sauce. Oh yeah. yeah. I absolutely love yum yum sauce. Oh yum yum sauce would have been another fun one for this. Mm-hmm. It would have yum, been. Yum. But yeah, this yeah, mayonnaise is a butter sauce. There's so many ways to go here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this was this oil. No, Melissa, you're not the only egg one. Egg yolks uh, and some dashi, um, uh, some uh, wine, all liquid. But they make what's called a stable emulsion. Emulsion, okay? Okay. So almost a solid. Yeah, it's down. not horrible at all. Yeah. Is it rich? Yes, it's rich. Oops. Now we're gonna take. I need to taste it because uh, we don't yeah. know. This is only uh, Taylor and I's second time actually making this. Yeah, yeah. No, the first one was an absolute fail, but I think this one. I think we got it. Fingers crossed, guys. But this no, is what no, no. development is. You just gotta try something silly and then you know fix it. Yeah, QP is six ninety nine for a seventeen ounce at uh, H Mart in California. Okay. See, and I see other ones, but every single time I'm at the store, they're like seven ninety nine at least. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah, it's like that's too much for mayo. Mm -hmm. Just go home and make it yourself. This one's it. Yay! Yeah, this one's it. Okay, I'm changing where you put the um, half of the dashi. Because it was a half teaspoon of dashi, correct? Yes. Yeah. What, oh, but it was taste. dashi extract. Uh, dashi is probably going to taste a little bit different. Uh, so. But it's not supposed to be a main flavor component. It's just supposed to be a little. Oof. Yeah. It's it's a little MSG is what it is. Is really what it is. That's what it yeah. is. Yeah. But okay, so uh, we put in uh, the mirin. We put in egg yolks, which were bright, bright yellow. Uh, we put in. You just make Kewpie mayonnaise. We put in this. We put in all those colors, but it's mayonnaise. Yeah. There's there's nothing brown. No. Nope. It's not even yellow. It looks like mayonnaise. This is mayo. Heck yeah. Now, yeah, Victoria's saying they've never seen dashi extract just granules, Ooh, and see, um, yeah, we talked about this a little bit because I know we were talking about with just like the MSG, right? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, let's see what the ingredients are. Uh, soy sauce, well, I'm gonna grab mine. sugar, water, salt, bonito, which is the fish. As okay. a matter of fact, it says right, uh, right in next to it, next to uh, air in parentheses, fish, natural flavors, and the next flavor is MSG, which is what the, uh, the kombu does, okay? And is that, what is that? Oh, just, that's this just straight. Now, if you're looking for MSG in your oh, store. Oh, that's not what this app wants to see. <laughs> if, if you're looking for uh, MSG in your store, look for Accent. It uh, goes under the, um, uh, the brand name Accent. Oh, I've seen that. Don't they sell that at Walmart? Yeah, they sell it everywhere. Okay. Straight in, it's just MSG. Mm -hmm. uh, is called Accent Flavor Enhancer. Okay, so we're going to use this and we're going to make my potato salad. Yeah. 
Yes, let's do that. You got your potatoes are cooled off. Cooled off. We're going to have to water this down a little bit uh, with uh, uh, with some lemon juice and um, uh, just a little vinegar just to keep everything bright. MSG just gives you more flavor. It heightens the flavor of your food. Yes, it was a staple back in the 50s and 60s. Yep. Yeah, it was commercial. There were commercial I mean, I feel like it still is. In the 80s, in the late 80s, I feel like late 80s, early 90s, there was like a huge thing where they were like, MSG is bad for you. It's so bad. Is it like yeah, that? It is and it isn't. It is racist. Well, I'm going to go with it isn't bad for you because, like I said, if you, if you, uh, if, Sorry, if I was bad for you, tomatoes are bad for you, mushrooms are bad for you. Exactly. It is, it, it's, uh, Victoria, uh, Moranin says that her, her dad called it his secret ingredient. Yeah. That's, everybody thought that it was bad for you. Like, bad for you, bad for you, but it's, it's not. Parmesan it's must be bad for yes. you. Everything in moderation. It is naturally occurring. Um, what we were talking about with the dashi earlier, which is essentially a broth of kombu, which is seaweed. Um, MSG is, you know, this is what MSG looks like when you buy it in the spice cabinet and just looks like white crystals. Yep. But before it existed in this form, it is naturally existing and they extracted it from seaweed at first. So yes. it's essentially the flavor of umami. And these are nice and cold and soft as well. Nice. And how long did it take you to cook those, Kaz? Not it took days. about five minutes to cook them. Did you boil them? Yes. Yeah. So I, I started. I started from cold water. Okay. Yeah, that's not long at all. But, but these are these um, new potatoes that uh, they're selling in packets and now. So I like that. And they went in, I put them on flat on a tray in the refrigerator so they would cool down a lot quicker. And let's go ahead and get these lemons on here. Make it all bright. Yes. Nice. Now we're not trying to make lemon flavored no, uh, no. Uh, potato salad, but it does brighten it up. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys for coming in. Appreciate you. Thanks Diaz Keynes for helping everybody see and make them feel welcome in. That's so nice of you. Yes, that yeah. is. We have been getting I know I have. I've been getting too chatty to where I have not been a good comment reader. So oh, you are sorry, definitely appreciated. <laughs> I'm just well, over I here being like, yeah, I, I am the worst person to talk to when I am passionate about something because I'm not talking with you. I'm talking at you. <laughs> um, Jay says that he loves your Hunter Green chef coat. That's his favorite color. Oh, thank you. I see you, Diaz Keynes. <laughs> okay, so. Uh, I'm not using the sweet. I'm still using the dill. Okay. Uh, if it were up to me. Uh, I don't think it's a big a dill. Yeah. <laughs> ah. Okay. Uh, 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 to me, sweet relish would be just fine. As a matter okay. of fact, there's a, um, uh, there's something called sa uh, sandwich spread. You guys have that? No. It's got it is. in it. <laughs> no. Let me see if I can find it. It's basically mayonnaise nice. that has uh, relish inside of it already. What is that? You've no, I've never, never seen that. No. I grew up with this on my sandwiches for lunch every day when I when I took my lunch to school. Well, yeah, I think that had to be an old product because if that was something that was released recently, that would have been called like Mellish. <laughs> yeah, they would have come up with with a fancy <laughs> name. Right? It would not be sandwich spread. Yeah, see, my sister is <laughs> in there. My sister's in the comments, but Benita Malone, she says yes. 
Yeah. This is, we've had this, we had this every day on our sandwiches. So right now Cass is mixing up a potato salad, but this entire episode has just been like us making mayo from scratch and like different sauces from said mayo. So this has just been like a nerding out over the proper way to make mayonnaise today. That's right. We <laughs> made, right now he has QP mayonnaise. He made regular mayonnaise. He made roumalade. He made branch. He made horseradish and he made, I'm missing one. Are you missing one? I am. I don't think you are. Roumalade, ranch, QPE, regular mayonnaise. Horseradish sauce. Oh, okay. horseradish sauce, yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, all that I said. Rewind the tape. <laughs> okay, so this is... We got it. This oh, is charter. Did we point out the charter? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. I need to put some uh, some dried spices in here. Let me find some dried spices. Yeah. yeah, don't be using that horseradish then. Maybe not for you. And the tartar sauce. So this is completely random, and this is me talking more about mustard because this is kind of my special tease, and I like to talk about mustard. But um, we were making the rebel lot, and that's very well known in like New Orleans and stuff. But um, the Creole mustard. It's actually, it's a Dijon with horseradish added to it. And really? the reasoning for that is that Dijon, you know, French style mustard with white wine. So for Creole style mustard, it's essentially that same Dijon style, but then they add horseradish to like add a kick to it. I love that. Okay. As soon as I learned that's what Creole mustard is, I'm like, ah, oh, that is just perfect marketing. Yes, Alley Cat. Team mustard. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. I'm on team mustard. Yeah. Okay. So that was parsley flakes going in there. And this is going to be dill. Okay. Well, yeah. you, you guys knew exactly what I, what I had planned for this top, didn't you? Oh, it was like, whoosh. Yeah. <laughs> we knew. <laughs> We've all been there. <laughs> When I was going to get my other knife, I'm like, you know, I, I heard you talking. I'm like, okay. Like, yeah, you know, the more they talk that. about it, the worse of an idea that sounds. Beautiful. Get that. Okay. And thank you guys. There's going to be something that I eat tonight. This is going to go in the fridge for tomorrow because. It's Memorial Day, and mm -hmm. I may go out on the grill. Ooh, you going live on the grill? Uh, I, I hadn't He's planned taking the day off tomorrow. But you know, why not? Maybe, I don't know. I'm taking the day off tomorrow, sort of. Taking the day off? I'm taking the day off from my real, like, physical your, job. Your real working. job. Which, this is a real job, too. I'll be working <laughs> my fake job. Yeah. <laughs> My other Perfect job, job. <laughs> my first main job. <laughs> okay, I'm going to take a picture of this real quick. Oh, yeah. For yes, sure. please. Yeah, can I have some? That looks great. It does. It does, Alley Cat. Look, flip phone activated. <laughs> That's right. My razor. You know what I'm talking about? The guy that's in Florida. It's like flip I phone think activated. High school when those came out. I, I tell I tell everyone uh, this is my cricket. So it's his burning oh, phone. <laughs> okay, I need to get some light. You're not you're not. Yeah, do you know where to get those cats? Uh, do you I have, have access to those? I think you have one. <laughs> Let's I see. I don't know. <laughs> There's some light. So weird. I have a feeling Kaz is going to be questioning whether to invite me next time. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Good you know, even with the light, it still looks dark, but I'm going to leave it to our web person to figure it out. Wipe a filter on it. It'll be fine. Yeah, yeah. Just let her figure it out because she can make magic. She's she knows what she's doing. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So that's one. Thank you so much. We made it over 20K likes. Thank you. I'm the problem. It's me. Okay, so we've we've done QP. Yeah. Uh, we are not going to do the AOE. Okay. Okay. Oh yeah, no. Like we are. 
like after this cats i never want you to say anything to me about my lifetimes exactly right two hours do you have but to wait I a full still, month before giving me crap about it i still have the record for a three hour live yes you do yes you do <laughs> i did do a three hour live i didn't time. realize when we're setting a record <laughs> okay. was like three okay. hours <laughs> But it was a good live. <laughs> I do want to taste this. Now, what it tastes like, as uh, Christine pointed out before, what it tastes like now is not what it's going to taste like tomorrow. Yep. Right. Any sort of sauce needs some time to marinate. Yes. This mm. just took the words right out of my mouth. A hundred percent. Well, but I, of course, am a mustard expert. Marianne, Marianne B says the aioli <laughs> is what I wanted to see the most. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marianne, tune in on Thursday night, and maybe we can get somebody to make it for you. I'll make it on Thursday. I'll make it on Thursday. <laughs> I'll do it. No, I'll do it. And you know what? You know what? I really what? do need to make it a point of just like one upping everyone else's lives. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what I used Wouldn't to be great as me being food talk TV manager. <laughs> great way to build her out. I think it's good call. He he would he would take everybody's recipes and he would pick out. Yeah, no, Marianne, I will. You can count on it. You can count on. It. I'm making it on Thursday. It is yeah. on my calendar. It's being done. But yeah, I, I uh, that's where I got all my ideas uh, was from everybody else's lives. Yep. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna. I wonder if. Um, uh, Melissa, can you come on or, or are you okay? Melissa, which one? Melissa Murd. I don't know whether, because uh, she... Oh, I don't know if I've seen Melissa Murd in here in a second. Oh, she's there. She's there. Oh. Right, but but don't don't invite her up if she doesn't want to come in. Do you want to come oh, in? Do you want to come out? Oh, she said she's here. Do you want to come on? Oh, she says no. Okay. That's fine. Oh, that's fine. So, uh, Monday nights is uh, The Spice is Right. Yes. And <laughs> Melissa Murd is the uh, is the talent. She is the talent. Her husband, Mark Mur Murdaugh, is uh, the camera person. So, you guys be sure to, wa to watch her. And, and then give her a follow. Thank you. You should watch it. I love the way she cooks so much. Like last time I saw her, she made these carrots that were just mm. like the rest of the food looked great. Like the um, buttermilk chicken she made looked amazing. Don't get me wrong, but I just really wanted those carrots. You got worried. Oh, Melissa Holly Hollywood thought that she was the one on deck. Ugh. Oh no. <laughs> Which I think that has to be a point I bring up to Food Talk TV people. It's like, you don't have to come up here just because we're inviting yeah. you. <laughs> just, yeah, just because we invite you, you don't have to. If, uh, we're being inclusive, not forcive. If, if Melissa Hollywood wants to come up, but I know it's late there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's late here. It's the same time. Yeah. <laughs> it's the same time here. Um, well, hey, I don't care about where you're at, okay? Oh. Okay, guys. So all I'm making now is my is my dinner. <laughs> okay, love that. So there was a new okay. restaurant that opened up down the street for me, and um, we Jared, my husband's on the town council here, and so he got invited to go down to the soft opening, and I had this chicken sandwich, and I loved it. It was like so crispy and delicious. And it looked like it had cornflakes on it on the outside, but it wasn't cornflakes. I have got my goal in life is to find out what they breaded that with. Why do you not think it's cornflakes? It's not cornflakes. It didn't taste like cornflakes. It's not cornflakes. Could you imagine if it's an unsweetened cornflake? Mm -mm. Nope. It would still taste like corn. It was something else. I'm, I'm going to corner the owner. <laughs> You're gonna corner the owner. <laughs> I'm gonna um, find what's, out. The, what's the place called? What's the place called? Um, they call it Mercer. Oh gosh, it's something house. Mercer Social House. It's brand new. 
Hang on here. And it's that's in um, Newtown. what city? Newtown, Cincinnati. That's in Cincinnati? Mm hmm Shit, I'll just call up there and pretend I have an allergy and demand to know all the ingredients. Oh gosh, did you come all the way up? <laughs> demand to know all the ingredients. That's sneaky. Yeah, because I have an allergy. That's sneaky. That's sneaky. I'm say, well, I'm not like, trying to like sell it or like ruin their lives over it. I'm just trying to make my friend Christine happy. Yeah, no, I'll figure it out. Don't you worry. Um, I don't know, but I will look it up because like I know what you mean with like that, that extremely flaky texture. Yes. Yeah, it was. I don't know what it was, but it was so crunchy and amazing. I wonder if it's not even them using like a cornflake type thing, if it's just mm -hmm. the way they like cut the chicken. Cause I've seen people like take chicken breasts and like cut with scissors at an angle like mm -hmm. this, like you're basically making like a Christmas yeah. tree out of it. So that way there's more surface area. It was on this, it was on a sandwich. It was a whole piece of chicken. So I don't know. Look, I'm looking <laughs> up the website right now and I'm going to look it up and tell you what it is. Okay, you guys, if you're um, putting tomatoes on a sandwich, season oh, them. Oh, yes, what is in your sandwich? No, a pretty hard. basic sandwich, but I am seasoning with salt and pepper the tomatoes uh, because you want seasoning on your sandwiches. Maybe. Season in layers. Season in layers. That's... Uh, that's the best food. Okay. Now, I would toast my bread, but I don't want to be here all night. So I'm just going to uh, put QB mayo. Now, when you uh, put, put mayo on your sandwich, you go from edge to edge. Uh, yeah. If you don't go from person. edge to edge, then uh, you don't know how to make a sandwich. Then you're a monster. Kaz, this is so funny because we were just talking about that Food Network show, The Kitchen, and you couldn't remember the name of the dude, Jeff Morrow. Jeff Morrow. Jeff Morrow. Yeah, yeah. But he's known as the Sandwich King, and he always says, crust to crust is a must. <laughs> oh, okay. Good. It, it's his one contribution to the sandwiches. <laughs> That's his one contribution. That's funny. The sandwich king. Crust to crust, baby. Oh, you know what? Wait, stop. Oh. No. What? Horseradish. Horseradish sauce. I'm making a uh, a roast beef sandwich. Oh, yeah. yeah. So you want that horseradish. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I want everybody to see this. It this looks really nice. I have no clue whether the color is washed out, but this is is medium rare as you can get. Yeah, that looks good. Yes. That that's it. It's starting to rain. Right. We're supposed to get bad storms tonight. That's gonna be fun. We just the had them, so we're just sending them your way now. Thanks. <laughs> you can take our storms. Well, we had round one this afternoon and it actually wasn't that bad. And now we're getting round two. Okay. Back to that sandwich. So it says <laughs> it's an Amish <laughs> breaded sandwich. And it has yeah, a I wish we had to look up the Mercer sandwich too. It has a sriracha aioli. It, it was amazing. And it has cabbage slaw and cherry peppers. Yeah. <laughs> it says hand breaded Amish chicken breast. Uh, maybe it's the Amish. They sliced up some Amish on there. <laughs> yeah, that's the ingredient we're missing. Is <laughs> the Amish? <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. All right. You guys, if you're just scrolling through, we are not typically what hosts of Food Talk TV act like. We are a food group of people that do live cooking content every single day. Right now we have Ooh, Cooking yeah. with Kaz. This is Kaz on Sunday Night Live and Christine over here and me here. And we're being ridiculous today. Mary we're Ann. We're serious on all the other days. Mary Ann but, has it. We're cooking Amish it's, now. <laughs> no, no, that's DS Keats. Mary Ann has it. It's the Amish bread. Oh, the Amish bread. Oh, yes. Oh, I thought we were adding Amish. 
Okay. The Amish bread. I bet they like crust it up or something. I don't know, like chunk it up and then they use that as the, because I don't, you know what? I'm gonna have to get one. I'll be like, this is what it is. This okay. is the sandwich I was talking about. Our yeah, experience. I see the menu here, but I don't see any photos of it. No, there's none yet. Oh. Brand new. I got a picture somewhere on my phone. I'll send it to you later. Okay. Yeah, totally. I'm sure I can like peek their Insta. Oh, yeah. Well, since, sorry, Kaz, we're sidetracked on that sandwich. Again. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. That's right. <laughs> we start on a different sandwich while we're so hosting a show where our cooking dude is actually making a sandwich. So yeah, we're <laughs> we're terrible. Sorry, but it was really good. <laughs> so you got edge to edge uh, horseradish, sliced tomatoes. There's no Amish in here. No, it was the Amish bread. <laughs> <laughs> you guys got me all choked up. And is that the Boston lettuce? Huh? Is that the Boston green leaf lettuce? This is butter lettuce. Butter lettuce. Okay. Yeah. Is that like the living lettuce ordeal? Oh, yes. I love those things. I love those living lettuces things. Oh, yes. I, know. I am going to dream about that sandwich tonight. I might go down there and get it tomorrow. This is so crisp. This one is so lettuce. crisp. Like if you haven't bought this before, it is butter lettuce that's served with like, or it's sold with still like the root at the bottom of it because it, it's still a plant, it's still growing. And you can add a wet paper towel to the roots that way you can still like keep it fresh and like it will last so much longer than lettuces typically do. Grow a little bit more. It will yeah, grow. Throw in the garden. Oh yeah, put in my tiny garden. In my comments. How's your tiny garden going? It's going pretty good, actually. I was so shocked, and I'm telling you right now, guys. I got that watering system, that solar watering drip system, and I did a video about it. I talked about it last week. I am so impressed with it because it's making sure that my plants are watered at a certain time every single day, and I think that my broccoli. And my tomatoes are bigger. They have grown a foot this week. It's insane. Wow. Yeah, I can't wait to show you guys. It's going to be on Tuesday. <laughs> That's my video, Tiny Garden. Yeah. Because tiny it's Tiny Garden, Garden Tuesday. Tuesday. Yeah. Tiny yeah. Garden so Tuesday. follow October Dragonfly if you want to see Tiny Garden Tuesday. Yeah. Pete, my show. <laughs> it's actually a one minute video. Last week we talked about mint and how it'll take over your garden and that you need to sink a pot inside your garden before you plant it and then plant it inside that pot that way the roots don't go <laughs> and we need cheese uh what kind of cheese you're going to use Havarti. Mm, i've I already had that Havarti uh, is a party <laughs> <laughs> i've already had that one before <laughs> uh, okay. Sorry, I don't mean to tell bad jokes. I'm such a monster at that. It's all right. Yes, you are. <laughs> the young lady wanted to know when you come on. When 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 Taylor comes on? You guys get both of your schedules. Well, I come oh, yeah. on every other so, Sunday. Yes, so these are alternating hosts. So this Sunday, next Sunday, Sunday after, Sunday here. I am just added for random technical talks on Sunday okay. sometimes. But your show is on every Thursday, seven central, called Cutting the Mustard. Um, I am the Mustard Queen. If you peek my content, I do a lot of um, mustard related activities. Okay. So um, I do cook a lot of like things that aren't mustard, but I do know how to make mustard from scratch and a lot of food science and stuff like that. And I will talk your ear off about food facts. Yes. And I love it. Um, also, um, give her a follow on her own page because there's any and everything you could want to know about mustard and some other things on there too. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, I saw something else on here. Oh, go to fttv.com if you want to check out anybody else's schedule. 
there will be a whole list of the hosts on there. So Kaz Marianne is asking what you poured all over the tomatoes. Was that just salt or was it a seasoned salt? Uh, no, this was I uh, on the tomatoes and I'm going to do it again. Oh, yeah. this is oh, okay. Because I missed that because we were chatty. This Ooh, is balsamic lace. Ooh. Ah, uh, yes. Now, I have, you know why I've never done that before? And I'm going to have to try it now. Yes, I've you will. Poured, poured balsamic glaze on my roast beef sandwich. New to me. Well, I had to do it because Oryx does it. Oh, of course. And Oryx. You know what? She could tell me that a stapler tasted good and I'd try it. Yes. <laughs> I mean, same. That's what I thought it was, but I was not certain. Listen, us influencers are always being influenced by the other influencers. <laughs> yes, we are. Ooh, yes, yes, sir. That looks amazing. No influence is original. We all took it from somebody else. That's uh, right. 100%. Except for me, I created our recipes. Yes, he did. He did. Um, including mayonnaise. He invented this. I did invent may mayonnaise. Yes, yes. You can look it up. There is no clear source of where mayo was invented from. So, like, we give this man credit. <laughs> That's great. That's me. Oh, okay, guys. <laughs> I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to taste my, oh my sandwich. God, he, we're going to get followers thinking it's the father of mayonnaise. <laughs> mm. I already know that's so good. Because look at it. Mm -hmm. And he seasoned every layer, like even with the tomatoes, it was the salt and the balsamic and then added balsamic elsewhere. Like everything was just layered. Yeah. The, we didn't even need to supervise. No. The uh, horseradish cream sauce uh, that I made earlier, Christ Christine was right. This is, it is now very hot. Oh, oh no. <laughs> it is now very hot, but it's good. Mm -hmm. It's really good. It goes with the sandwich, a hundred percent. Yeah, and it's being uh, it's being cooled down by the tomatoes and the um, and the uh, Havarti cheese anyway. So okay, so the extra tablespoon of horseradish that you were getting ready to put in there would have been not good. <laughs> right. mm. But remember, as I said earlier, if you have too much horseradish in your mouth, if you have too much horseradish in your mouth, it's too hot. Be a mouth breather. Because yeah. the volatile chemical that makes horseradish and mustard hot will go up to your nasal cavity, and if you breathe, breathe through your mouth, you won't feel it. Yep. So thank you, Mel Melissa Hollywood. Thank you for being in. Whenever she's in, she just takes care of everybody. She really does. Yeah, she really did today. Thank you, because I was super distracted. Also, Diaz Keynes, Keynes I want yeah, to Diaz Keynes was super clutch today. Yeah, he welcomed yep. every single person in today. Diaz, Diaz has been in all live long. He's been here, been in here for all two hours. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. The whole time. Mmm. Mmm. Wasabi. You, wasabi, right, Vic, uh, uh, Victoria? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, are we so, having a wasabi discussion? No, we can't talk about American and wasabi. <laughs> it's horseradish. Yeah. We were talking about breathing through the mouth. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, you guys, thank you for hanging out with me. Two hours. Yeah, I can't believe it, Kaz. I thought we were going to have a hard time getting an hour with mayonnaise. And we got two. Really? And we didn't even make everything. We no! didn't even make everything. We cut things out. I know. We have to come back on Thursday for your aioli. <laughs> for the aioli, yes. And and maybe the uh the thum. Tum. Yeah, doom. I got it. The doom. And somebody else mentioned another one too. What was that? Oh, I'm gonna call it the part tomb. Oh, oh stop it. <laughs> yes. uh, no. <laughs> she did it. Thank you. Okay, so <laughs> let's let's wrap it up. It's, wrap uh, it up. Eleven o'clock eleven o'clock at night on the East Coast. I appreciate you guys. Uh Christine, do you have anything? Guys, thank you so much for uh, joining our live and make sure you guys give Food Talk TV a follow. Uh, foodtalktv.com is where you'll find all of these recipes. And if you missed any part of this live, all two hours of it, it will be available on <laughs> and on Facebook. 
<laughs> and I appreciate each and every single one of you guys that have followed and uh, tapped the screen. We got up to 21,000 likes and I will be live next Sunday at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And I'll have an announcement. <laughs> and uh, how many days until you're on vacation? Oh my gosh, I think it's like 19 now. I'm so excited. <laughs> Don't let her fool you. She knows how she goes. She knows down to the hour. So yeah, it's pretty much. You have anything, Taylor? Um, if you're not following me, you're dead to me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm, I'm kidding. I was trying to be funny. Um, um, no, um, just thank you all so much for following us. And, um, I had a great time on this live. Be sure you're following us. Cause we do different food content all the time. And like, you know, all three of us are like big deals around here. So if you liked this content today, I'm sure you'll like other content you see because we have, <coughs> you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if you also don't like this content today, then um, we'll do something different next time. There'll, there'll be yeah, somebody yeah. tomorrow. Yeah, we'll there'll do something somebody, different there'll tomorrow. There'll be a different person tomorrow. So two yeah, different yeah, people yeah. tomorrow. So, yeah. so if you don't like any of this, tomorrow's a yeah. new day on Food Talk TV. We're consistently on and consistently different. That's right. That's right. Okay, guys. Thank you. I just want to remind everybody that there, the world is full of uh, good people, guys. But if you can't find one, be one. Thank you, everybody. Hi, that's been Sunday Night Live.